Praise the Lord. Amen. Good morning to everybody this morning. Uh, it's good to have you with us uh, for our Sunday school lesson this morning here at First Holiness Church. Uh, we're going to try to educate you this morning a little bit. Educate myself as well, but it's good to have you with us. It's good to be in, in God's house. Amen. And uh, again, when I woke up this morning, I realized that still the greatest thing that I possess is my salvation. Amen. I, I wake up every morning and realize that in, in everything that I have, it's still always the greatest thing that I possess. But uh, again, like I said, it's good to have you with us. We're going to go through... Uh, uh, little lesson this morning here, again, out of Matthew. Uh, the title of the lesson is The Question of John the Baptist. And this lesson today, if you want to read along in your Bibles with us, is coming from Matthew chapter 11, verses 1 through 15. Let's read. And it came to pass, when Jesus had made an end of commanding his twelve disciples, he departed thence to teach and to preach in their cities. Now when John had heard in the prison the works of Christ, he sent two of his disciples and said unto him, Art thou he that should come, or do we look for another? Jesus answered and said unto them, Go, and show John again those things which ye do hear and see. The blind receive their sight, the lame walk, the lepers are cleansed, and the deaf hear. The dead are raised up, and the poor have the gospel preached to them. And blessed is he whosoever shall not be offended in me. And as they departed, Jesus began to say unto the multitudes concerning John, What went ye out into the wilderness to see? A reed shaken with the wind? But what went ye out for to see? A man clothed in soft raiment? Behold, they that wear soft clothing are in king's houses. But what went ye out for to see? A prophet? Yea, I say unto you, and more than a prophet. For this is he of whom it is written, Behold, I send my messenger before thy face, we shall prepare thy way before thee. Verily I say unto you, among them that are born of women, there hath not risen a greater than John the Baptist, notwithstanding he that is least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than he. And from the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven suffereth violence, and the violent take it by force. For all the prophets and the law prophesied until John, and if ye will receive it, this is Elias, which was for to come. He that hath ears to hear, let him hear. Okay, in this lesson that we just read, there's something that we're going to discuss this morning that every single one of us walking on this planet at some time or another has to deal with. It. John had to deal with it. Here, and that thing that we, at some point in our life, may have to deal with is doubt. Doubt. Sometimes doubt enters into us uh, if we're saved. If, if you take John the Baptist, doubt. Look at verse. Look at verse four. No, take that back. Let's look at verse three. John had sent, in verse 2, he had sent two of his disciples to Christ to ask this question. Verse 4. No, I'm sorry. Verse 3. And said unto him, Art thou he that should come, or do we look for another? So doubt had entered 
into John's mind about whether or not Jesus was who they were looking for or should they start looking for someone else. Was he the Messiah or should they start looking for someone else? You know what this shows us? That we're never too big in God that doubt can't enter into our mind. Amen. Now we know John had baptized Jesus. John had seen the Holy Spirit descend from heaven upon Jesus and he heard the voice that spake from heaven and said, this is my son in whom I am well pleased. So he should have been convinced, right? There shouldn't have been a problem with him having doubt enter into his mind about who Jesus was. But guess what? Doubt Amen. entered his mind. And you know, there's nothing wrong with that. That's because we're human. And we have human weaknesses. John was human, just like you and I. And at a moment of weakness, I'm getting a little ahead of myself, but in a moment of weakness, he, he's confined in a prison at Macarus. He's been in prison, as I read the lesson, it appears to be about four months, maybe a little bit longer now at this point in time in our lesson today. He's been in prison. Now, you're talking about a man that's used to being free and roaming around in the wilderness, not confined and locked up, but free to roam and free to go. Now, all of a sudden, he's confined. And he's limited in what he can do. And, and I, I'm going to tell you, when you get still like that, and, and you know the devil, he loves to come in. He loves to come in, the devil does, when he can get you in a place and start trying to put that doubt in your mind. Is Jesus really who he said he is? Is he really the Messiah? Is what I believe as a Christian. Let me tell you something. As a Christian, I myself, me, have asked myself before, there's been points in time in my life, in my walk with Christ, where I have stopped. And Satan has asked me the question, is what you live in for and what you believe really, is, is that real? Is, is that real? Do you really believe all of that? But if you'll just run to Christ with this weakness, he knows our weaknesses. And, again, I'm getting ahead of myself. And get more of Christ, he'll resettle the issue in your heart. He'll, he'll get it settled for you, and, and you'll, you, he'll strengthen you, and you'll move on in the faith that you have. You won't let that doubt hang around. We can't let that doubt hang around. The devil wants that doubt to hang around, so maybe he can get us out of church, but... Let me read this introduction. I, I, in fact, I'm going to do quite a bit of reading. It may seem lengthy at times, but what I'm going to read to me was just so very good. It's a lot of good points in it, and it's just, just so very good. And we may not even make it all the way through it, and that'll be okay too. We'll just do whatever the Lord wants us to do in this lesson this morning. Amen. But let's read this and start by reading this introduction real quick. It says, those of us who really know our own hearts realize very keenly the subtle working of doubt and how it leads to discouragement and despondency and consequent personal and individual failure. I like what it said. It said those who really know their hearts. There might be some that would step up and say, oh no, uh, not me. I'm secure in the Lord. I've been serving the Lord for 30 years. I won't doubt. I'll never doubt. I ain't going to doubt. Not me. I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a high saint of God. Well, guess what? I got news for you this morning. So was John a high saint of God. Amen. He was called to be the forerunner of Christ, to, to introduce Christ to the world. Yeah. He had a high calling. Amen. He was a high saint of God. But John found himself doubting. So don't think that you're so big that you can't doubt also. Amen. Doubt can enter into any of our minds. 
Okay, it says, but God is ever tender, patient, and faithful. He knows us. He encourages and strengthens his failing servants. Just as the Lord Jesus instructed and encouraged John the Baptist. He knows us. He knows we're human. He knows we're our weaknesses. All we got to do is take it to him. Take it to him. John, that's what John done. John sent his disciples, and what did he do? He didn't sit there and, 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 and cry and pity around in his doubt. But he said, I need to ask Christ a question. So you go ask him this question for me. He went to Christ. He didn't go to somebody else and ask them. He took it straight to the source. Amen. That's what we can do today. Me and you can still do that. We can take it right to Christ. Amen. Take it right to Him. Ain't no shame in it. There's no shame in doubt coming to you. Ain't no shame in it. But let's don't sit in it. Let's just do, let's do something about it. Amen. Let's take it to the Lord. How we praise the Lord for His tenderness patience, and faithfulness toward us. Time and again has he helped us. Let us remember, beloved, that when we are called to pass through severe tests of patience, which cause troubling doubts and dim and perplexing uncertainties, we may go to the Lord, confess our weakness, and perplexity before him and receive from him aid and comfort. Again, we can take it right to him. Amen. He's helped us so many times before and he's right there if you'll call on him to help you again. Amen. It says, the Bible says that he's a very present help in a time of need. He's right there Amen. to help us. Call on him. When you're confused, when perplexities come, when, when you don't know which way to go, when doubt has entered your mind, <coughs> run to him and ask him the question, Lord, call out to him, help me in my weakness. I'm, I'm just, I'm, I, 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 I'm having problems with this. I'm, I'm struggling with this. I need an answer. It says, then to... We have a full and complete revelation. The, the, faith, the, the sure and faithful word of God to enlighten and comfort us. We can also have the Holy Spirit dwelling in our lives who ministers to us the very life and strength of the conquering Lord in Christ and thus enables us to do all things through Christ which strengtheneth us. Amen. You need strength? It's Christ Amen. that strengthens us up. It reminds me of a, a message that my son Trey preached for us here a few Wednesday nights back. And that's what he preached on was strength. We need strength. <clears throat> God's people today more than ever need strength in this world that we live in. Amen. Strength. Where do we get strength? We get strength in Christ. That's where we get it. Period. We can do what the Bible says it is written. We can do all things through Christ, through Christ, through Him. It's got to go through Him, right? Amen. We can do all things through Christ, which strengthens us. It's Christ that gives us the strength. It's Christ that will remove the doubt. If you doubt, go to Him, He'll remove it. Amen. Satan will have to get behind you and then you can just press right on forward and say, no devil, uh-uh. Not here, not today. I don't doubt. I believe in my Lord and Savior. Amen. I believe in the work he done here on this earth, the cross. I believe what his word says and I am not doubting anymore. Amen. He'll take care of it. I guarantee you he will. I know he will, because like I said, I've had doubt creep in on me before. And I start doubting the things of the Lord and the things of the Bible. 
And the Spirit just steps in there like it just said. We've got the Spirit there to help us out. Amen. The Spirit will step right in there and He'll get you all straightened back out. Right. And get you right back on the road again. Put that devil behind you and say, no, I'm, I'm moving on. I'm going right on in what I believe. But that's what we're talking about today. We're talking about the word doubt. How and, and what better lesson in the Bible than right here with John and how a high saint of God, John the Baptist, baptized Jesus. This man had doubt. And, it, and this lesson shows us how to remove that doubt. How the doubt was removed for John. Okay? I like this definition right here I read. I'd like to read this for you. Our definition or this little uh, uh, saying here. Doubt. The word doubt. Doubt is the nemesis of faith. <clears throat> we walk by faith, right? Amen. We walk by faith. By faith, we believe. When that doubt comes in, it tries to destroy that faith. It's the nemesis of faith. It wants to destroy your faith. And it plagues every Christian at one point or another. I dare say this morning that there's not a Christian walking this planet or that has ever walked this planet that hasn't had doubt enter their mind. Amen. It gets all of us. Amen. Right. So, you know, it got John, it's going to get me and you. Right. Amen. I done been there. Right. It's going to get you. Amen. That's what the devil does. The devil wants to destroy us. Right. The Bible tells us he goes about as a roaring lion. Anybody know what a roaring lion does? <laughs> if he gets a hold of you, he's going to destroy you. Right. He goes about like a roaring lion seeking whom he may destroy. Man, I'm telling you, that devil, he's, 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 a, uh, he's a bad dude. Amen. So we got to be careful. Of, we can't let this doubt creep, creep in on us. Christ is the great remover of doubt. Go straight to him. He's the great remover of doubt. Run to the Lord. Don't go to some of your unsaved friends and say, I'm having a little doubt about my faith. Will you help me with it? I really don't believe they're going to be able to remove your doubt. Amen. In fact, when they get through with you, they might have you doubt more than you ever did. Right. But you need to go talk to a good saint of God and, and, and the number one thing is to first just take that thing straight to God. Take it straight to it. Get in the Word. That's right, Brother Herbert. Get in the Word of God. You get in the Word of God and that Spirit of God can start working through that Word right in you. Straighten it all out, just like that. In a little while, you find yourself, you ain't doubting no more. Standing on the promises. That's right. Standing on the promises. That's right. Standing on His Word. <clears throat> I believe it. I'm telling you, that, that, that Spirit of God, He'll straighten you out. He'll get you back on the right road. Says, it says, speaking of the Holy Ghost, it says one of His jobs, one of His jobs of many jobs, is to lead you and guide you into all truth. That's what the Word says. I believe the Word. He'll lead me and guide me into all truth. If, if I start doubting, He'll say, if, if I'm being led by him, he'll say, no, that's the wrong way, son. Come over here, and this is the way we're going. And he'll get you, he'll lead you right back on the right road. You're going the wrong way, son. This way, come over here. I, I got you right here. You just follow me, and we're going to go We're gonna go straight to where you're trying to get. We're going to make it to the other side. Okay. Uh, like I said, I'm just going to start reading here. I'm going to read this morning out of the part of our lesson that is called developing the lesson. 
I liked it better this morning than, than I did the lesson exposition. So that's what I, that's what my heart told me. I liked it, and I, I felt like it brought out so many valuable points for us this morning. It's going to seem like lengthy reading, but we'll stop and hit some high notes every now and then, and maybe we'll get through it. And maybe we won't, but we'll we'll just take off reading and, and try to get a little deeper in this thing here this morning. John Salt reassures. Man, you know when I read it and I thought about it, he baptized Jesus. Amen. He baptized him. But not only that, Brother Eddie, he baptized him and then when he come up, he saw the Spirit of God descend down on Amen. Jesus. That was the Spirit of God, symbolic of the Spirit of God, this dove, and then he heard a voice. Amen. From heaven that said, this is my son. Yeah, my beloved son. And my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. My goodness, do you need anything else? I would have said to myself at that time, I don't need nothing else. Doubt will never enter in now, but guess what it did? Amen. Doubt still came in to John. When he got locked down and confined in this prison and and the devil starts working on your mind and, and, and doubt creeps in right. and, 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 and all of a sudden you're headed down the wrong road. Amen. But John knew where to go. He asked the right question. He went to the right place and he asked the right question. He went to Christ. He sent his disciples. He wasn't totally away from the world. His disciples, John's disciples, were allowed to come in and talk to John. So he talked to two of them and sent them and said, I need you to go to Christ and ask him this for me. Is he the one or do I need to start looking for another? He had introduced to his disciples Jesus. He said, this is the Lamb of God. And doubt crept in. Wow, that blowed me away. But that just tells me that I'm not exempt from doubt coming in. Amen. So, he sought reassurance. John was in prison in the gloomy fortress of Macris. He had been there four months at least. Perhaps much longer. Don't really know at this point in time. But he was not kept holy without knowledge of the outer world. His disciples were allowed to access him. They related to him the mighty works of the great prophet of Galilee. So they would come and they would tell John what Jesus was doing. Amen. The mighty works of Jesus. Yeah. Nothing could interest John more deeply. That was right down John's alley right there. He liked to talk about it. The works were the works of the Christ. The Messiah, such as were attributed to him by the prophets, they would naturally fill the thoughts of the Baptist and form the great subject of conversation between him and his disciples. These signs and miracles, these, the, the, the uh, healing the blind and raising the dead and healing the leper and causing the deaf to hear, the prophets said these would be the signs of the Messiah. What other man has done this? That should have settled it in John's mind, right? But doubt's trying to creep in. Doubt's trying to creep in. That devil don't like it. If you're standing on the rock, he wants you to fall off that rock. He wants you to start doubting. He wants you to doubt your salvation. He wants you to doubt that there ever was a cross that a Christ hung on. He wants you to doubt all of that. He had witnessed the descent, this is what I said earlier, he had witnessed the descent of the Holy Spirit upon our Lord. He witnessed that. I witness. He had borne witness that he was the Son of God, the heavenly bridegroom. He had pointed him out to his own disciples as the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. How could he have any doubt about his Messiahship? Lord, how could John have any doubt? Amen. How is it possible? But God, give us this lesson in his word today to let us know that it is possible. Amen. 
You can doubt. There's not a man alive that can't have doubt creep into his life. But he also shows us in this lesson how to remove it. Okay? How could John doubt? Probably long imprisonment had told upon him. It must have been especially irksome to one who had been so long accustomed to being free, to the free, open life of the wilderness. Confinement enforced inactivity with no work, no employment for his ardent energies tamed the spirit that had been so strong. You know, something just hit me. When we, in Hebrews 10, 25, he tells us not to forsake the assembling of ourselves Amen. today. Right. Amen. And you know what? This goes right along with this lesson with John. When we sit at home and we don't come by ourselves and we don't come to God's house to mingle in with our brothers and sisters, that is a prime spot alone by yourself, nobody, your brothers and sisters there to lift you up and encourage you for the devil to slip in your house right. when you're sitting there by yourself and put down in that right. Get you to think in another way. Right. We need each other today more than ever. In fact, that's what he said in Hebrews 10, 25. He said, do not forsake the assembling of yourselves together as the practice of some is or as some do. And in the last part, he added to it. Especially as you see the time Amen. drawing near. I don't know about you. I see the time drawing near. Amen. Near to his second coming. And I need the encouragement of my church family more than I ever have. Amen. Okay? But see, John's by himself, pretty much, in prison, locked down, confined, a perfect place for Satan to try to work on that man. Perhaps he sank at times into seasons of melancholy like Elijah, his prototype. It may well have been so. He was a high saint of God, very bold and full of strength, but he was human. Amen. We're human beings. Brother Eddie, I'm just a human being. I got weaknesses. I've got weaknesses. Some men like to think themselves to be big men, manly men, and they like, oh, you know, I ain't weak. I'm, you know, ain't nothing going to get to me. I'm a man's man. You know, I'm strong. I'm, 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 I'm steady. I don't never falter. I don't go to the left and go to the right. I'm strong. I'm, I'm, I'm hard as a rock. No, you ain't. No, you ain't. What you are is you are human. Amen. And humans have weaknesses. Amen. John was human. John had a weakness. He, right now, his weakness is doubt. Okay? And human nature has and must have its inconsistencies and weaknesses. No man lives at all times up to his highest level and it has been often noticed that God's saints fail sometimes in that very grace which is their most striking characteristic. But what seems to be their strongest point or their strongest characteristic, sometimes that's exactly where they fail. Where it looks like they're the strongest, that's where they wind up falling. Elijah, for instance, in courage. Moses in meekness. And Peter in steadfastness. That was their strongest characteristics. And they wound up failing and becoming weak in those very characteristics that made them strong. Be careful, brother or sister, when you step up and say within yourself, I won't have no doubt. Amen. Doubt will never enter into my mind. Be careful, the devil's after you. Right. He's working on you. He's working on you. He's got you believing that you don't have a weakness. And I'm telling you today, you're human and you do have some weaknesses. Every one of us do. 
Every one of us does. Holy Scripture presents to us men as they really were. And I like this right here. This little part, I like it. Listen to it. Holy Scripture presents to us men as they really were. Don't give me no fairy tale. The Bible's not a fairy tale, but it's real. Amen. And he presents it to us as real. Right. He don't talk about men that don't have weaknesses, but he talks about real men. Real men. He talks about it in a real way. So, it does not draw ideal pictures. Don't you like a movie when you watch a movie and you say, well, I know how that's going to end because they're the hero and that's the star of the movie, so I know how it's going to end. They're going to be okay in the end. That's an ideal ending, ain't it? Right. They're going to make a movie and it's going to have an ideal ending. They're going to make it like they want it. But not in the Bible. In the Bible, God don't present to us just perfect men, but he presents to us men that have weaknesses, real men. They have ups, they have downs. They're not always steady. That's real. Now, if a man don't ever have it, if, if a man's portrayed as never having any weaknesses, that ain't real. Because he does. So he presents, the Bible presents to us not ideal pictures. It exhibits the imperfections as well as the graces of holy men. Right. We should go look at David. David had a weakness, didn't he? Amen. Samson had a weakness. What was it, women? Amen. Samson had a weakness. David had a weakness. It, it came forth with Bathsheba. Yeah. But he went to Christ about it. He went to the Lord and he said, please forgive me. See, we can have weaknesses, we can fail. Yeah. We can have doubt, but we can get it corrected. Right. I can fail, but I can go run to Christ and I can get it corrected. Amen. If my heart is repentant and I'm really sorry for what I've done, I can say, God, I was weak there for a moment, but if you'll forgive me, I, 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 just help me. Amen. Let me tell you something, he's right there waiting for you. Right there waiting for you. And you know what I believe the answer will be? You're okay, sir. I covered you in the blood. You know, Brother Ray, we're thinking about Elijah's at what You know, one day he called down a fire from heaven and consumed everything around him. Yes, he did. And next day he ran like a scared puppy. Just where he thought he was strong. Yeah. Jezebel said, hey, by this time tomorrow, Mm -hmm. Example after example of high saints of God that had moments of weakness. Amen. But listen to this. We should be very thankful that God gives it to us in his word. Amen. I am thankful. I'm glad to know that David had a weakness. Amen. I'm glad to know Samson had a weakness. You know why? Because I say, well, they were human and I'm human. I, they failed, but they corrected it. Amen. I'm going to fall, but I can correct it. Yes. Yes. They did, I can. Yes. I'm no different in God's eyes than they are. Amen. That's right. He loves me too. And, 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 and if I fall, I see by these the men of the Bible that I can get it right again. Amen. I can make it right. It is one of the secondary evidences of the simple truthfulness of God's word and it offers to us a more interesting study, a more encouraging lesson. An ideal character has far less human interest than the actual portrait of a real man. I like to see something real. I don't want to see all the ideal stuff that TV portrays to us or a commercial portrays to us about how good, how many commercials you see that they tell you the ideal, uh, they're selling a product. Amen. And oh, how good this product is. Boy, it's an ideal product for you with this problem that you may have. Just buy this cream or buy this lotion and it's an ideal product and you buy it and find out it ain't worth 15 cents. Amen. They just wanted to portray it to you as an ideal thing. This is what you need. But I like somebody to tell me something real. I want to hear something real. The 
I don't want to hear about an ideal man. I want to hear about a real man that I know he has highs and I know he has lows. Amen. And I know sometimes he might be hung in between. But that's real. Amen. He ain't always on top of the mountain. Right. Sometimes he falls down in the valley and he needs help getting out. That's it. Okay? Thank you, and the thought that the saints of the Bible who conquered in the fight and won the crown of life were partakers of our sins and weaknesses is full of encouragement and help to us. Again, right. it encourages me, Brother Ed. Right. David, the king of Israel, Amen. he fell. Amen. But he got it right. That encourages me. It helps me to know that when I fall, well, I'm, I'm just human. David was human. Samson was human. John's human. Elijah was human. We all fail. We all need help. The Baptist sent to the Lord in his difficulties. I'm going to tell you something this morning. If you're if you're saved, don't ever, 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 when you got a problem, take it to the Lord. Take it to Him. He's the one, sometimes the only one, that can help us with our difficulty. Sometimes our own brothers and sisters in the house of God that we love so much, they can't help us. Amen. They would like to, and they try the best they can, but they just can't give you exactly what you need. They can pray, but they may not be able to help you in your difficulty like you really need it. It's not in them. It's not in their in their, in, in their reach to do that. But let me tell you something. God's arm's not short. Amen. It don't matter what it is. If you're taking to him, he's got the stuff to fix it with. Amen. He'll get you back on the right track. So John, he sent to the Lord. Hey, boys, come in. I got you. Something I want you to do. I want you to go ask him something. He put the question to him clearly and plainly. So we must come directly to Christ when we are troubled with the like perplexity. He will be gracious unto us as he was to John, as he was to Thomas. Thomas doubted, didn't he? Amen. Oh, doubt Thomas. I ain't going to believe that he is, is the real one until I see the nail prints in his hand. He wasn't even there. And the Lord knew what he said. Amen. He knew what he said. And then when he saw him, he finally saw him. He said, well, there it is. Thomas, you want to stick your finger in? That's it. Oh, Lord, my God. No, he didn't need to do what he said he had to do. See, God removed that doubt. Amen. Bam! Just like that. Amen. Doubt's gone. Amen. He believed then. Okay. He will give us peace in believing. You ever have trouble believing? The Bible says, Lord, I believe, but help my unbelief. Amen. Sometimes, Brother Eddie, right. we have a little trouble with our believing. Right. But he'll give us peace in believing. We'll believe and we'll have peace that we, we're on the right road. That's right. Helping us to persevere, he'll help us to keep on. Like the Baptist, steadfast unto the end. Are we to look for another? Was part of the question John asked. Are you the one or are we to look to another? No. There is none other Savior, no other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. There is nobody else. The question in my mind is settled today. There is no other there is only one. His name is Jesus Christ. Yeah. The Bible says he is the way, the truth, and the life. It also says, he says, that I am the door. Right. 
that no man entereth in except by me. Amen. You got to come through Christ. There ain't nobody else out there. If you're trying to get to heaven, you're going to have to go through the door. Amen. It's settled in the word. It's spoken in the word. It is, it is the word. It is written. He is the door. He was the son of God that hung on the cross for the remission of our sins. And you ain't going to make it by going any other way. Amen. Buddha, Allah, or whatever God there may be out there today, you can't get there through me. It's got to be through Christ. There is no other. Amen. If anybody out there today is looking for another, you're looking, you're looking in the wrong place. Amen. You're looking in the wrong place. We look only for him for full of manifestations of his grace. We look for his coming when he shall make this body of our humiliation like unto the body of his glory. Good gracious alive. Is it 1040? <laughs> I know we ain't going to get through this. But that's okay. We've covered. Uh, yeah. We've covered what we need to cover. I wish I could have read it all, but we've covered it. You know, a lot of what we need to cover. But I tell you, time goes by fast when you get into something that interests you. And I'm telling you, the Word of God interests me. I want to know more of it. I hope everybody out there wants to know more of the Word of God. But Jesus gave him an answer real quickly. Jesus gave him an answer. He answered it. And he sat back and told his boy, uh, uh, John's disciples, said, go back and tell him what you've heard and what you've seen. Amen. Nobody out there has ever done anything like Jesus done. So John was reassured. He was reassured. John went on, went long after this, I think. John was beheaded. He Amen. gave his life for Christ. Yes. He held out all the way to the end. He received from Christ an answer that caused his doubt to go away and he held on and gave his life, gave his head for what he believed. I'm going to tell you, if I don't believe it, I ain't giving my head for it. Look at last week, we talked about the risen Christ. A proof that he is risen is those old boys, those disciples, and, and, and the history that's written in the Bible of the resurrection, they believed it enough. At first, they didn't believe it all, right? Ain't that what we talked about? They didn't really believe. They didn't even know what he was talking about when he said he was going to rise on the third day. But whatever, all the eyewitnesses, or eyewitness accounts and everything they saw caused them to flip-flop and believe so strongly that they preached it to the end, Brother Eddie, and they gave their life. I'm not willing to give my life for something I don't believe. Come on, that's right. I believe the Word of God is the Word of God. It's true in Christ and the work on the cross. He is the only one. There is not another. People out there listening to me, if you want to make it to heaven like I do and you want to live an eternal life, Forever and ever and ever, I can tell you this morning where you got to go to get there. And you got to go through this one right here that John had to go through. Amen. The one he baptized, the Christ, the Messiah, the Son of God. It's the only way. Now, if you're serving any other God out there this morning, I'm telling you, you're not going to make it. Amen. You're Amen. not going to make it. And then John, uh, Jesus goes on in the last part of this lesson and he, he talks about John and, and the greatness of John and what he's doing is trying to settle it in the minds of the scribes and the Pharisees that, that uh, he had a little doubt, but that's okay. He, he had a weakness for a moment. He's not crazy. He was sent. He was commissioned to be the forerunner for me and everything John told you, you can put, you, you, he was a great man of God. You can put faith in what he said. Amen. That's what basically in the last part what he was trying to tell, tell them here. Settle it in their minds that John, you should have listened to every word that John said. Because John was telling you right. Amen. Don't let a little weakness. People, let me end it with this. People today still, they don't want to point.
to the high points of a saint of God's life, but if they fall, then the world is ready to run and say, oh, look, look at that. They're not really as holy as you thought they were. They failed. They, 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 they committed adultery or, or they doubted or, or, or something came into their lives that didn't look very holy. And, oh, look, they're, 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 they're weak, Brother Eddie. They ain't nothing to them. Don't look at someone's weakness. Don't put all of your, what you're looking at on that one weakness. But John does so much, so much as the forerunner to Christ. Amen. He introduced the Lamb of God to the world, which began a new dispensation, a new, a, 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 a new covenant. He was greater, he said. Jesus told him said he was greater than any other prophet. Any man born to woman. Amen. That includes himself. That's right. That's right. That's right. So he lifted, he, he lifted John up before the people that might have been just wanting to point at him and say, yeah, he's sitting in prison. He done got all, he ain't even believing no more. Mm -hmm. It wasn't that. He had a moment of weakness. God, re he went to Christ. Christ reassured him. He got back on the right path, and he went on to the end and gave his life to Christ. And I'll end it with that to give a uh, pastor and some of these musicians time to get their self ready for our message at 11 o'clock and some music. And uh, God bless all of you, and thank you for listening. And uh, I guess if churches don't open up, we'll see you next week.